Um, but uh, so yeah, here's these exceptions. So these um, these neutral elements would look like this. Um, and then um, uh, as you go further down the parity table, um, not everything under chromium behaves the same way. I think that uh, molybdenum and silver behave the same way as vanadium and copper. But I think that tantalum and tantalum might not behave. Uh, I'm sorry that. Uh, uh, tungsten W might not behave the same way, but I would be really surprised if you expect were expected of anything memorized beyond the, this 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 row right here. Okay. If anything, she would just give you the information that you need. Some textbooks have just a, just because there are some exceptions. Some textbooks just have an appendix where they tell you all the electron configurations. So the only ones I think your instructor would test you on are the ones where the periodic table gives you the right answer. And maybe if you were to memorize some exceptions, these are the most important exceptions. But there become, things become more complicated and there become more exceptions as you go further down the table. I don't think you'd be expected to have those memorized. The good news is that it's really simpler to get the electron configurations for the cations. For the cations, we can just follow this principle and put things in the D block, not in the S block. Okay. 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 Um, so that was a digression going through neutral elements again. So let's go back to here, and here we have the vanadium 2 plus. So I was just saying that these cations will pretty much never have S electrons. Now let's try to draw vanadium 3 plus. Let's draw the electron configuration for vanadium 3 plus. How many valence electrons does vanadium 3 plus have? Two. Two. But I don't think you've actually shown two electrons there. There. There you go. So it looks like for a second there you were thinking that it would just have the noble gas configuration. But vanadium 3 plus still has two valence electrons. Um, so that would be. And again, we don't put them in the S block, we put them in the D block. Okay, so the key is I would recommend, at least when you're first learning this, write down how many valence electrons there are. That's the key to actually write down the number of valence electrons, and that'll be important for some other stuff in the chapter two. So let's get in the habit of writing down the number of valence electrons. So this would not be neutral unless it was vanadium 5 plus, I guess, which has, is so, has such a big charge, I don't know if that even exists. Okay, um, let's try chromium 2 plus. Let's write the electron configuration for chromium 2 plus. Good. The key is how many valence electrons does it have? Four? Four, yeah. Because the neutral chromium would have six. And it's lost two. And where are we going to put the four electrons? Not in the S block, in the D block. So we were talking a second ago how neutral chromium is an exception to what you would expect. We said this was the electron configuration for neutral chromium, which you just have to have memorized because it doesn't correspond to the periodic table. Uh, but then I was also assuring you that that doesn't make any difference for the cations. The cations just follow the same pattern as, as everything else. So just like the vanadium cations have only D electrons and no S electrons, the chromium cation has only D electrons and no S electron. And the fact that the neutral cation, the neutral chromium, um, is somewhat exceptional didn't didn't affect us all here, uh, affect us at all. Um, how about chromium three plus? Now there's three valence electrons. And all three of them go in the D block. Good. Okay. What's the electron configuration for neutral rhenium?
I'm writing it? It's going to be four, right. fours and four F ten. Oh no. Fourteen. Fourteen. That's right. And then um, five D. So it's going to be 6s2, I mean xenon, and then 6s2, 4f14, 5d5. You figured that out. Good. Because it's always f. Yeah, so since the f kind of fits in before it, that's why we go through the whole f first. Right. Numbers. That's right. Yeah, you figured that out. Good. So here's rhenium in the periodic table. The previous noble gas is xenon, so the core configuration is xenon. And now where do we put the electrons? Well, first we put these electrons in the 6s block. All right, but then notice that here we have 57, but here we have 58, which basically tells us that the f block fills up before the d block. It's a little bit complicated because first we have one d element, and then we have these down here, but we don't need to get into those complications. The basic message of the periodic table is that the f block is lower in energy than the d block. We fill up the f block first because this, all these numbers are smaller than most of the rest of the numbers here in the D block. And how many columns are there in the D block? 14, so there's room for 14 electrons. 14 electrons in the F block, I meant to say. There's room for 14 electrons here in this F block. All right, and then rhenium is in the fifth column of the D block. So there's also one, two, three, four, five electrons in that D block. All right, and we're just assuming here that the periodic table is gonna be reliable in uh, telling us the, the configuration for the neutral element. Because I, like I said, I don't think you're, there are some exceptions, but your instructor I don't think would test you on those exceptions. We assume that here, and I, I think that's true for rhenium anyway. It doesn't fall, fall into the exception. All right, so I wanted to cover what happens when we get down to the F block. So here we put in this F block. Well, now let's do uh, the rhenium cation. How about rhenium two plus? electrons did the neutral rhenium have? Seven. How many valence electrons? 21. Uh, oh, let's see. Yeah, yeah 21. <laughs> 2 plus 14 plus oh, 5 is 21. Oh, okay. That's what it is. These are all valence electrons in the sense that they're outer electrons. They're, they're the, 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 most, the furthest out S, furthest out F, and furthest out D um, blocks. So how many valence electrons would this rhenium have? 19 outer electrons. Now, where should we put the electrons first? Where do electro where in a cation, where the elect where do the electrons most want to go? F block. Yeah. Now we didn't have to deal with this before. We never had to deal with this row because we, there were no F blocks up here. That's why I wanted to do an example like this where there is an F block. Well now that there is an F block, we should use the F block. And how many electrons can we put in the F block? 14. 14. So we should put all 14 electrons that we can into the F block, because the F block, according to what we've learned here, is lower in energy than the D block. So and the rest would go in D. And that would be, and that would still be 5D5. That's right. So I think that one of you didn't fill up the F block completely, but we should fill up the F block before we put any electrons in the D block. That's why there's no S electrons, because we would fill up the D block before we put anything in the S block. So this still follows the same pattern we said before, Cations don't have S electrons. Transition metal cations don't have S electrons, um, just the D electrons. Um, they're pretty much always going to have a full F block, though, because we have to take away all, all six more electrons to get start taking things away from the F block, which was pretty much never happened. So as a rule of thumb, these elements down here, these cations will always have a full F block, and you put the remaining electrons in the D block. If you have cations from the lower transition metals, they will always have a full F block, and you put the remaining electrons in the D block, and the cations will never have an S, any electrons in the S block. 